onomatopoeia, 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 onomatopoeia. Oh my God. Who creates these words? Hello there, I'm Gabs, and today we're gonna to be looking at literary devices, specifically onomatopoeia. This is lesson 11 of 12, so if you've stuck with all the other lessons all the way through, well done, that's insane. I'd like to, I don't know, give you a shout out, so comment below if you manage to stick with them all. This video will cover a definition of onomatopoeia, we'll look at some examples, and then we are going to do an exam style analysis of a sentence with onomatopoeia in it. So let's go into the definition. Onomatopoeia is when a word is written how it sounds. There's an immediacy with the word. It brings our reader closer to the text, as if they're hearing the sound as it's playing out on the page. A lot of onomatopoeic words are used in children's literature because it's fun to hear and teaches them how to make certain sounds. Onomatopoeia is also used in comic books. Kaboom, pow, bang. So let's look at some examples. Stay in tune with what feelings come up for you and try and think of two to three descriptive words uh, to sum up this sentence. So number one, the ping pong ball pops. Two, they sobbed and wailed and moaned. Three, the knife sliced through the air. Four, it prickled their skin. Five, the leaves rustled. Let's see what I got for my emotive words. So the ping pong ball pops. Very simply, it just captures that playful popping sound of, of the ping pong ball, like bouncing across the table. Um, two, they sobbed and wailed and moaned. Um, unwavering grief is what I got. Is that sort of tripling of the sob, the wailed and the moaned, using three very powerful words to convey the writer's grief. Three, the knife sliced through the air, threatening, there's violence. Number four, it prickled their skin. Mmm, now there's something really squeamish and repulsive about this. Think of the thing that you fear, you know, whether it's like some sort of insect or, yeah, it just makes you kind of go all goosebumpy. Five, the leaves rustled. Now, this is interesting because it could be soft and comforting, there's also like an element of sinisterness to it. Like it depends what context this quote would be used in. If it's about, you know, idolizing nature, then it would clearly be soft and comforting. But if it was set in a horror story, it would be threatening and sinister as though something's about to kind of jump out of the leaves. Now we're gonna look at my exam style analysis of quote number four. The writer uses onomatopoeia with the word prickled. This literary device immerses the reader in the text as though the sound of the word, the plosive P and the consonant K evoke a powerful feeling of the reader's own skin being pricked. So things I do well that I want you to take forward. I identify the literary device immediately, onomatopoeia. I pinpoint the word prickled within the sentence. I've not necessarily needed to use the whole phrase, I've just pinpointed prickled. Um, then I've told the examiner what this literary device is actually doing, how the speaker feels about it. I've gone even further to use the plosive P and the consonant K. Me as the reader, I do feel like I'm in the, the speaker's own skin because I know what it feels like to have my skin prickled, you know, and that really evokes uh, a feeling of like empathy because I'm in the speaker's shoes. This is lesson 11 of 12, that's right. It's the penultimate lesson on literary devices. So uh, subscribe um, so that you get the notification for the last lesson. And if you wanna get your hands on this deck, head over to my Patreon, leave a comment below, tell me what you learned today, anything that surprised you, and come say hi and hang out on Instagram between videos. Um, well done for sticking with it today, guys. I'll see you next time.